Uh, welcome back to Looper Automotive Services. Today I'm unloading a little relic that I picked up from Springfield, Ohio today. Ended up taking most of my day because Route 42 and Route 142 were both closed. Uh, so detours and you know, road construction or something. Anyway, uh, you guys are all probably like, what the heck is this thing? Because that's what I said when I first saw it. This thing is a 1948 Chrysler Town & Country. It is a factory Woody sedan built by Chrysler back, and I think they started them in 41, which was like a barrel back, almost like a sport wagon. Actually pretty cool if you look them up. They made them again in 42, then we had the war, which stopped everything. And then after that, in 46, they made it in some configuration, but 48, they had 1,175 of these built, brand new, and 100 of them were inline eight versions, which actually had a longer wheelbase than this one. This is the shorter wheelbase with an inline, I think it's a Spitfire six cylinder inline. So let me get this thing unloaded, we'll get it in the shop, and I will see if I can make this thing run after it's a multi-year slumber in a garage in Springfield, Ohio. Stick around. still exist out of 1175 built for this model year. Um, this thing's pretty cool. I'll show you around it here after I get it all uh, situated. <laughs> well, let's get cracking hoping this won't be too major of an ordeal. It seems how this car was running three years ago, four years ago. Something like that. Look at this engine bay. Spitfire flathead six cylinder. Made from 42 to 58, 59, 58, something like that. 15-ish horsepower. Oil bath air cleaner. The car has been repainted. They didn't repaint the firewall. Um, so that's the factory original paint. Looks like the entire chassis and everything else has been repainted. The chassis itself looks really nice. Like it was never really rusted or pitted. Heavy duty air cleaner. Clean oil base before dirt level has reached lower offset in reservoir. Got some big old bugle horns. 
wonder if this, this thing goes auga. Some really awesome 1948 wiring. Wrapped in cloth. So we need to put something right here, and luckily the owner picked one up for me. So I'm gonna drop it in here and we're gonna find some missing parts. What goes there? Oh, that holds the alternator. Sorry, generator. This is a six volt car. Let's check our oil. It's clean like it was just changed. And it's in the operating range, so we're good there. Ew, that doesn't look good. Well, there's some coolant in there, it's a little cloudy. Let's see about a coolant change here after we drop the battery in it. See if it'll roll over. Why did they take the bolts out of the battery? That's odd. Ooh, is this a positive ground vehicle or a negative ground vehicle? That's a question. Mm. Please hold. I need to look something up. Did I see a manual on the back of this car? Hmm. Look. So you have a big one and a little one. Okay, so negative is the little one. This is a negative ground car. Good to know. At least that's what we're going with because what the battery terminals will hook up to. <laughs> I wonder where the battery hold down's at. Maybe it's in the trunk. Let's go to the trunk and find out. I don't remember seeing that. Look at that bustle. I'm gonna have to count how many pieces of wood make this make this up because just this arch here is one, two, three pieces. That's four pieces with a piece inlaid in it here. Maybe it had a repair done there from a, from a, from a gouge. That's a piece, that's a piece. There might be, that one might be split again. Yep, so that piece is three pieces. That's three pieces. That's at least two. That's two. One, two, three, four. It's really cool how these craftsmen made these things back in the day. It's gonna come down on my head. Chrysler's wonderful Woody. Time for a bedtime story. The Town and Country, 1941 to 1950. That's a neat book. Uh, no pictures. There's some pictures. They're in black and white. I'm sorry, the 41 and 42 Woody, I think I mentioned earlier as a two-door. It was a four-door Woody that seated nine, not a two-door Woody. It was referred to as a barrel back. 41 nine passenger model with a rear seat and forward position. Armrests moved with the seat as a unit. Rear seat area was carpeted. Hmm. Huh. Wow. Like the size of a suburban for today post-war years. They did a lot of these in convertibles. These were, a, these were a rich person's car. Like, these cost four times what a Ford would cost. 
in its day. There's a picture of the guys doing woodwork. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. Fred, Barney, and James, they're just whittling away, making it happen. Pretty cool. I don't see any battery parts in here. Oh, that moves. Oh my goodness, that's heavy. Oh, it's got handles. Score. Fender cover. Doesn't smell like mouse poop. Industrial towel and uniform rental service. I don't think they paid their uh, deposit on that. That's a perfect fender cover though. Van Dyne Crotty, Industrial Tower and Uniform Rental Service, Columbus. What's that van? Old International, maybe? <laughs> Pretty cool. I'll put that on the fender where it belongs. Oh, that's a passenger car parts list. That's not a manual. That's just all the parts. Some notes. We stock gears back to 1933. Northwest Transmission Parts, Winchester, Ohio. You want to bet they're not around anymore. No longer in service. Who'd have thought? Back when everything was rebuildable, you could get the parts for everything. Is that a shock I saw? Yep, rebuildable shocks. Those were the days. Why would you replace it when you could just put like some 10 cent seals in it? Crazy. I don't know what that is. Rebestus Heavy Duty Made in USA Gold. Is that a uh Park brake lining, maybe? Because park brake doesn't work. <laughs> it was probably on his to-do list. I don't know what belt, what V belt it needs. It's good to know. Probably get that at an agricultural store. Well, let's get back to putting the battery in this thing and see if we can get it to power up. Because I'd like to know how much fuel is in this car. Well, this car probably would burn on 80 octane, so it probably doesn't matter if the fuel's three years old. Or if, the, if the fuel's like 10 years old, it's probably not going to run on it. We don't have any sparks. We need to clamp the bolt on that. I am missing a battery hold down. That's a shame. I don't know if that's still at the house. Send the guy a message and ask him about it, but I'm not sure he's gonna know. I'm gonna have to take the door latches apart and uh, clean them up and lubricate them. Fix the wood in the hole so that it'll hold the boat, hold the screws. Intricate dash. 90,000 miles on this car. That's impressive. Might be 190,000 miles. It doesn't have the one in front of it. Wow, the headliner's beautiful in this thing. It's got wood spars holding the liner up. That's super cool. Got a weather strip there we gotta glue back up.
Got a heater down there. Hey, this has the crystal, uh, crystal handles. That's cool. Well, it has some of the crystal handles. Heater, temp, headlights, panel lights. Let's see, panel lights come on. That's a big no. Nope. Oh, I should probably tighten that up, huh? All right, so that guy's on nice and tight. That guy's on tight. The headlight's not working. Oh, that one is. Look at that. You can feel the heat of like six candle power there. I have to look into the see if the light's bad. Let's see if the rears are working. Yep, rears are working. Very cool. You can see I actually hit this one with some uh, Never Doll. And the chrome is pretty thin, but it cleaned up really nice. It's nice and it's got a good shiny luster to it. I hit this one here. You can see how it brought it back. It's still got pitting in it. But you can see what it looked like before and what it looks like after a little elbow grease. So this car should, uh, it's going to take a lot of hours, but it's going to really pop once we get it done. So this says fluid drive on it. That means this is a manual automatic transmission. So you shift from first into second. It's a similar to a three on the tree. And then you let off the gas and get back into the gas. It shifts into third and then you drive it that way until you come to a stop. So pretty cool. License plate lights working. This is actually your center mounted brake light. And those are your turn and driving lights. It's really a pretty amazing car. And it's got the crystal inlets on those too. Rear vent windows, so you can smoke them if you got them in the back seat. Did it have ashtrays? Yeah. Got the old ashtray in the back. Nice. Well, we got six volts. The lights work. Let's see if the horn works. We've got 5.99 volts. We are good. Kick it in the guts, I think. need the key for that. Maybe right that's my start button. Let me grab a key.
door handle. You push forward and it locks the door. It cranks over. It cranks over slowly, but it cranks over. That's good. We've got oil, we've got coolant. You see, it'll pop off. Good old oil bath. Time for you to go back to work, you little lady. Wake up, Mr. Fuel Pump. It's been a long slumber. There's a choke on this somewhere. It's got a heat choke. Assisted heat choke. That's interesting. I think I had the key on too long. So, popped off once and then it growled and then it's no longer happy. Funny how that works. Well, the fuel gauge doesn't show anything on the needle and it does move. I mean, it moves just a hair, so it's probably got half or nothing in there. So I'm going to run over and get five gallons of fresh fuel for it. Um, this would be a unleaded, sorry, a leaded uh, fuel system. So we'll probably want to throw some lead additive in there as well, which isn't a big deal. They still sell it. Uh, I'm a little surprised it's not popping off when I feed it fuel. I have to put that I'm wondering if maybe I flooded it, because this has got a tiny little carburetor, and I was putting in fuel like it was a V8 with a four barrel on it, and that was probably too much. So uh, We're going to go get some fuel, let this thing sit for a little bit, and uh, we'll try it again. Sometimes you got to walk away. Besides, it's lunchtime and I'm hungry. So what the heck? Very cool car, very complete car. Um, although I have not found the battery hold down for it, so I may have to make one of those. Which is a shame, because it was in the car when somebody took the battery out of it. It was not me. But I mean, this is honestly, it's, a, it's an amazing car for what it is. I'm pretty sure I'll probably never see another one of these. <laughs> but I want to hear it run. I'm going to go get some fuel for the car and for me. All right, I dropped a couple gallons of fuel down her. 
try this again. Pump's woken up yet. Awesome. That's exciting. Yeah, pull this thing out in the sunlight. This thing's amazing out here. making a turn all right so this car has been lovingly disassembled and recoated bumper supports are clean the back side of the bumper was coated they painted it to make sure that it wouldn't rust and there's not really any major pitting in it a little bit of pitting or rust bubbles from back in the day but they've been stopped The frame supports don't show any signs of pitting. The frame itself up here looks beautiful. It's nice they coated all this stuff. My fuel drain. Looks like we're going to drain some of the fuel out. It's looking kind of gross. Got some oil leaks, which isn't too surprising. These things weren't really known for being able to keep their fluids on the inside. Super clean frame.
Oh, I was right. That is a park brake belt. Yeah, park brake needs redone. We've got a belt for it. I mean, the frame on this thing is amazing. This thing's never really seen rust or salt, I would guess. Got a little spot there, but if that's the worst on this car that I find, then this car is pretty amazing. Doesn't look to have any repairs. Floor pans look to be original. A little corrosion there. But again, for the age of this car, 75 years old, this car is in amazing shape. Heck yeah, man. This is going to make somebody a really nice car. Needs some seals. Needs some gaskets. Looks like they ran something over with the fuel tank. Hey, fuel tank's got a drain in it. That's awesome. Looks like all the axle seals are leaking. The brakes are working. We'll uh, take it for a test drive and see what we can see. I don't see any signs of repairs on the fenders. Normally you can see the stitching from where stuff was welded in. Looks like it might have had a dent up in that area there. Which you can't see. Up in that area there it looks a little distorted but it's nothing to worry about. Yeah, this is an amazing car. Got the drain holes for spare tire well. That way your trunk never fills up with Fills up with water. Just a fantastic car. Holy step! Traction bees, treadwear, something. Lux Champion. They got about 12 psi in them. Yeah, they got about 12 psi in them. They're a little bit low. It'll probably roll a little easier with air in the tires. This thing weighs like 4,000 pounds. Getting there, bit by bit.
we're gonna end this one right here for now. Uh, I got it working on the door latches. I got headlight out. The brake light doesn't work. Unless your compressor's kicking on. Um, really not too bad. Fired up, runs, drives, took the lunch. Not a bad way to go to lunch. The thing will do 60 mile an hour with, with ease. Uh, I need to do a bunch of chrome polish on this, so that's going to be a tediously boring and painful job. And I'll probably just uh, take the car home, crack a cold one, and sit in a chair in the shade and start polishing, because that's what it takes. I did take a few minutes and use some Neverdull on the couple pieces of chrome in the back. They cleaned up pretty well. Um, at least as good as can be expected for original chrome on a 75-year-old car. This has not had the chrome restored on it, so, you know, if you're going for a show car, you would want to do that, and that's a lot of money. Um, but I'm going to try and just polish it up. I'm going to give it some luster back and give it some shine, and uh, we'll see how that goes for us. And that will uh, hopefully make it worth more to the prospective new buyers uh, that may want to purchase this one. Uh, because a dirty car never brings as much money as a clean car. So, um, cleaning is ahead. At any rate, thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe. Have a great time. Have a great weekend. And, uh, don't do dumb stuff. Stay safe out there. Glad to have you guys coming along for the ride on the stuff we work on. This one's pretty random. I don't think I'll ever see another one. Very cool car. Have a great day.